In the past week, the internet and mainstream media have been abuzz with the shocking news of the untimely demise of underworld kingpin Alan Meradian. The killing of this 48-year-old, notorious figure has sent shockwaves through the criminal underworld, leaving a trail of intrigue, mystery, and drama in its wake. Alan Meradian, known for his lavish lifestyle and connections to organized crime, met a tragic end that has captivated the public's attention. Speculation runs rampant as to the motives behind his demise, with rumors swirling about rival gangs, betrayal, and hidden secrets. The details surrounding his death are shrouded in darkness, fueling a sense of suspense and tension that grips the imaginations of both law enforcement and the general public. In his life, adorned with Versace decorations and enriched by the profits from selling bricks of cocaine with a counterfeit Ferrari logo, Alan Moradian always seemed like a character who had emerged from the world of movies. Also known as the Tony Soprano of Australia, Alan was known for his love of Italian brands. Alan always appeared larger than life, living in a world adorned with luxurious Versace items and profiting from selling illegal white powder. He enjoyed a life of opulence and extravagance, surrounded by riches that reflected his taste for luxury. His residence in West Pennant Hills was a testament to his wealth, adorned with Versace trimmings throughout. In every room of his mansion, lavish gold accents adorn glossy black wood and metal, exuding an air of grandeur. The decor extended to the finest details, with caped figures holding ornate candelabras like majestic crowns atop a sleek black dining table, accompanied by chairs worth $50,000. Even the shower curtains and duna covers were replaced with plush Versace prints, ensuring that no corner of his home was spared from the extravagance. The pinnacle of his luxurious abode was the living room, where Alan would recline on a plush black couch, surrounded by a ceiling adorned with a mural inspired by the Sistine Chapel. The mural, costing $40,000, depicted trumpeting angels and haloed figures, transporting him to a realm of heavenly beauty within the confines of his own home. Beyond the lavish interior design, Meradian indulged in other displays of wealth. He contemplated purchasing a Lamborghini with a Versace theme, valued at $850,000, which originated from the Golden Gun Syndicate in late 2006. The Golden Gun Syndicate, one of the largest drug groups in New South Wales, was ultimately dismantled by the authorities. The syndicate earned its name from a gold-plated gun seized during a raid. They imported cocaine from Chicago to Sydney, with each kilogram package stamped with a horse logo and valued at $30,000. Allen brought in at least 40 kilograms of these packages, amassing considerable wealth. In 2007, Allen was arrested in a major police operation that led to the downfall of the syndicate. Numerous arrests were made, millions of dollars in cash and assets were seized, and a symbolic end was marked by the confiscation of the gold-plated pistol. Allen's wife, Natasha, was also involved and sentenced to prison. The Empire's downfall revealed an arsenal of weapons and additional criminal activities. Despite his imprisonment, the Golden Gun Syndicate continued its violent activities, including the murder of Gamal Micah, a key witness in the ongoing case. Allen's recent murder suggests that he remained involved in organized crime, holding a prominent position within the criminal network and having connections to the Comancheros. The incident occurred at Spring Street in Bondi Junction around 8.30 am at an underground car park. Allen was ambushed by two assailants and killed. Police who were informed of the incident rushed to the spot and saw the cocaine lord lying on the road in a pool of blood. Two men fired into his vehicle as he sat in the front seat. The shooting bore all the hallmarks of an organized crime murder, according to law enforcement officials. Allen was widely recognized as a major player within the criminal underworld. It was apparent that he had become a significant target. Allen's involvement in a covert cartel known as the Commission shed light on his position of influence. The Commission, a secretive organization, held a tight grip over the drug market in Sydney, exerting control and dictating operations behind the scenes. In 2021 Australian authorities shared the information with public regarding the Aussie cartel, or the Commission, a powerful criminal syndicate comprising of nine dangerous and one of crime bosses. With an estimated annual income of $1.5 billion, this cartel has strategically organized itself to smuggle drugs into the country, aided by corrupt government officials and insiders within the border security agencies.
The Australian Peak Criminal Intelligence Agency has labeled these individuals as the country's highest priority targets, recognizing them as a grave threat to national security. The cartel consists predominantly of members from Australian bikey clubs and Middle Eastern crime syndicates plus some old-time players, forming a formidable alliance that poses a significant challenge to law enforcement agencies. While authorities refuse to disclose the names of these nine underworld figures, whispers of the underworld hint that one among them could have been the enigmatic Alan Meradian, a mastermind lurking in the criminal underworld. The imprisoned Comanchero boss, Mark Buttle, stands as a grim reminder of the Aussie cartel's influence. Joining him in the ranks of this nefarious commission are other ominous figures, including the elusive Hells Angels member Angelo Pandelli, rumored to have sought sanctuary within the enigmatic ruins of Greece. However, the true specter haunting law enforcement agencies is none other than the elusive Hakan Aik, commonly known as Big Hux. This criminal mastermind has cunningly evaded capture, his whereabouts believed to be concealed within the enigmatic lands of Turkey. Working together with Hakan Arif, known as Little Hux. Among this cast of rogues, a triad-linked figure named Michael Tu looms ominously from Hong Kong, a strategic player in the cartel's web of illegal operations. As for the enigmatic Kiwi, Dax Nakuru, his presence in the cartel was abruptly cut short as he was apprehended, captured, and forcibly expelled to the United States, leaving behind a trail of secrets. Drug kingpin Alan Meradian was found dead inside a car in a Bondi Junction car park, on Tuesday morning. According to the police, the fearless daytime assault is being characterized as a meticulously orchestrated incident, described as a well-planned execution and the hunt for the killers is on. Following the incident, dozens of police officers and detectives swarmed the area and shut down roads surrounding the crime scene. The cops also found a burnt-out grey Porsche Macan on James Street, which is about one kilometer from the crime scene. A second car linked to the murder, a Holden Commodore, was engulfed in flames in Zetland. In the sports car he died, seven bullet holes were visible on the car's driver's side window when it was removed by police. Police possibly have also found the weapon, used in the killing. Reports suggest that Alan had been living in fear for the past 12 months, and had moved out of the family home he shared with his wife into a rotating collection of properties, to protect himself. He was also reported to have changed cars regularly. The funeral service for the drug boss, took place at an Assyrian cathedral located in Greenfield Park. An extensive presence of law enforcement officers and guards was deployed to ensure the safety of the gathering. Various underworld figures and bikies were seen paying their respects. Heavily tattooed associates and bikie figures including former rebel Jesse Vela were also present at the service. In a display that captured both the attention and curiosity of onlookers, a formidable gathering of mafia-styled associates, intricately adorned with indelible ink, paid their profound respects to the fallen drug kingpin. At the cathedral gathering, friends, family, and associates of the deceased mafioso paid their final respects in a funeral that reflected the somber nature of their connection to the underworld. The atmosphere was subdued as attendees, dressed in traditional attire, gathered to honor the departed figure. With quiet conversations and shared memories, the funeral became a poignant reflection of the ties forged within the tight-knit community. While the occasion carried an air of secrecy and intrigue, it was marked by a respectful and restrained demeanor, recognizing the distinctive circumstances surrounding the death of the drug boss. The ongoing efforts of Strike Force Raptor to apprehend the perpetrators responsible for the targeted attack last week continue, with anticipation of swift retribution.